what that actually is. So anyone who is tuning in right now who wants to know what the piece of dedication is all about, please go to our YouTube page, the highest wisdom of the church, and type in piece of dedication where you can see it. It, it would probably be like the, the first video. Mm -hmm. It would be the first video up on the screen. Today's topic is different. Um, we have a different lesson today. Um, the title is, Women Are Not Permitted to Be Pastors. Women are not permitted to be pastors. And I think this is a very timely lesson because the lady, the, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> the church that's saturated with uh, female pastors, or bishops, or deacons, whatever they want to call themselves. Deaconess. There's something else outside of the lesson. Um, I would like for someone to show me what's the. Uh, uh, Words in the Bible is there's a mother of the church. <coughs> right? and, and what they call them? First ladies? Yeah, first lady. First lady? <coughs> I've never seen that in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And the Bible warns against asking to take anything from the Bible. So all, all these uh, these titles outside of Scripture, I warn you, to the Spirit most high, be careful. There's no such thing with first lady. I have a wife. She's not the first lady of the church. And what we're going to do today is um, is go through the New Testament and the Old Testament. And go through this thing and show you that the servants of God were only given to men. Okay? Okay? So, I don't care how, I mean, the, the, not just myself, the most I don't care how I feel about what she thinks she's capable of doing. He had never given women <coughs> authority to teach or pray over men. Teach your prayer. Now, is it unlawful for a woman to pray for a man? No, it's not. A woman can pray silently for anyone she wants to, but she cannot pray for her husband verbally in the presence of him. Okay? Mm, God. So let's just get this thing straight, but let's get to the Bible. God. <coughs> let's break it down. So I hope all those have an ear to listen to the Spirit to say this day. Because as the scripture shows us, the most high uses men for his service. Satan uses women. Satan has usurped the divine authority of men, the image of the most high, and has used women <coughs> to destroy men and the earth. So I'm not saying that women are bad, bad uh, people. Women has a, have, have a place in the order of the most high. We're not a church that demean women. None of that. We just find what the Bible says. The Bible commands a husband to love his wife as he loves himself. So that's not demeaning anyone. But because I love my wife, I'm not going to break the laws of the Most High. Okay? Um, one more thing I wanted to touch on. What was that? The Bible says that there's, there's nothing new under the sun. Also that his counsel endures forever. So there's no such thing of, well, that was way back then. But in our time, things are different. That's contrary to what the scriptures say. There's nothing going on today that was not going on in biblical times. So we can't, you know, create our own scenario to make it fitting for us. Well, we see right now, you know, uh, most of the men are locked up and weak, so, you know, women have to take this role. The most high never told women to take a role uh -huh. that was to, to put them over men. Right? So we're going to also get into the scripture and break it down when it says the woman is to keep silence in the church. Right? We're going to break it down and show you what exactly what it means. Now, there's many women in, in our church, and all of them have a mouth on them, trust me. So ain't no woman in, in our church silent. Okay? But there's no woman, no women in here sitting before us. Like I men this brother is doing teaching. <coughs> the Bible strictly commands of, of what the woman, a woman is, what her role is in the church. And we're about to cover that. Let's start with the first precept, first Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34 to 36. <coughs> <coughs> And it reads, let your women keep silence in the churches 
let your women keep silent in the churches. Now, women have a question. That's not what Paul is saying. Right? The spirit of Jezebel has been, been, been dominating the earth for a long time. Jezebel was one who usurped the authority of a husband. Right? So this is nothing new. Three. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. So before we get into the silence and to speak, notice what it says. The women are commanded to do what? <coughs> to be under obedience. Obedience. So how is a woman under obedience if she's leading? Can't be. Can't be. Let's get more silent. Oh yeah. Keep silent. G, G silence. G forty six O one. It says to keep silent, keep close, secret, silence, hold peace. Hold peace. So women, if you have something to say, hold your peace. Don't be so boastful. So quick to speak. Okay? The Bible says, be swift about hearing. Slow about speaking. Okay? Let's get what it says about the other one. G4602. Did we get 2290? 2290? 2290. I need my phone. Right there. Let's speak. Oh, second. Oh, Okay. It says, so what it says, it says, what, read that right there. It says, women are what? It says, oh yeah. let, your, let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. It's not permitted for them to speak in verse 23. <coughs> now, it's the, that's why the strong concordance is a, is a very useful tool. The Most High loves his women. I mean, his daughters, right? It's not telling the women they can't speak. But you go into the into the original word that was in the Greek right there. It says women are not permitted to preach, not speak. So Paul is is is, is establishing order. Women have a seat. The Most High flock is a men. The service the Most High has never made one woman in history a priest. It's to the priest that the service of God belongs to. So it says, women are not permitted to preach. It should not say speak there. That's why you, you have to diligently seek the most high and go into what the original word in the Greek. <coughs> Can you pronounce that word in Greek? Laleo. 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 Laleo, but it, 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 it says um, to preach. Okay. So this is the Sabbath that. So Paul is, is, is reminding the brothers and the sisters that women are to, no, have a seat. If you're married, listen to your husband. And let the brothers do what the most high command them to do. Okay? So women are not permitted to preach. <coughs> Read. Verse 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. Now it's showing you what it's talking about. It's some of the women, if you have to, to learn anything, right? How you learn it when you're teaching. So if you were teaching, this, this, this would be not applying to you. So those in the audience are here to learn. <coughs> so if you don't learn anything, like Paul said, have a seat. Quit trying to teach the brethren. Come here to learn. If you got questions, instead of you blurting out being disruptive, ask your husband when you get home. Okay? Now, in this church, this will happen. I personally like the open form. I don't mind a sister asking a question. But one thing I would not do is let a sister teach this church. But if she has a question, that's my role to, to edify the sister, to teach the sister. If she gets carry on, I will stop her. Okay? Same goes for a brother. Read. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. It is a shame for women <coughs> to preach in the church. Okay. 
What? Came the word of God out from you? So Paul asked a question. Word. Did the, did, did the word of God come from you? <laughs> so the, the Paul is going back to the beginning. He created Adam first. Adam was to be over his wife, to instruct his wife, to teach his wife and his children. The word of God came to Adam. And from Adam to his wife. We're going to even show you when Christ was here. Now, there was many women on earth. Many women surrounded Christ. But the most high didn't send women to Christ to preach. Mm. To be over his church. That was the opportune time to do it right then. Establish order. When Christ came, he came to set things straight. If the most high wanted women to preach, to be leaders of the church, he would have gave uh, women you know, to, to, to help Christ out. Uh, now, the women help Christ out in the ministry? Yes, they did. But they, they was not the elders of the church. They were not the pastors of the church. We're going to show you the role the sisters play <coughs> in the church. Three. Came the word of God out from you, or came it unto you only? Came to you only. Now let's check it out. When the angels came, were they in the form of women or men? The word of God came from heaven to masculine spirits to men. Okay? Now the angels talked to women? Yes, they did. They talked to our mothers. Okay. But they didn't put them before the church or men. Next precept. Next precept, Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. So let's stop right for a second. As Paul is referring to, that's why I went back and said Paul is talking about Adam. It, as it says uh, in the latter part of uh, 34, under obedience, as also says the law. <coughs> Let me show you. The law just didn't start with Moses. So Paul is going back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 and it reads unto the woman he, he said I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over thee. Women your desire is a natural thing the most high did with you. Your desire shall be to your husband for your husband and your husband will rule over you. What does rule over you mean? Let's, let's, let's get that. Let me get that. Mm -hmm. That's H4910. Let me get it. Yep. To rule over, to rule, to have. Oh, yeah. It says, make to have dominion. <coughs> governor. Reign, reign like you, like you're the king, see the queen. The king is over the queen. Not like the day when the queen is over these men. Okay, this is divine or have power, have authority. So the Most High is established it right, right there, that the men will have dominion, authority, divine authority over the woman. So how can a woman have authority over a man? It's not of the Most High. Uh -huh. When you have authority, that means the woman is subject <coughs> to the man. But see, in Satan's system, he has exalted the woman. So not every woman thinking that they don't need a man. Huh? You know? They're thinking, they're thinking less of the image of the Most High than they ought to. <coughs> thinking that we should be equal or, you know, the, hey, Dominion, govern, reign, uh, rule, have power, don't mean you're equal. And don't get me wrong. As I stated, the man, the <coughs> husband, is, to, is commanded to love his wife as he loves himself. Right? The most high is over Christ. He loves Christ like he loves himself. But the most high is over Christ. Christ is not planning to usurp the authority of his father. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Neither should a woman ever try to usurp the divine authority of their husband. But Satan has programmed these women well to believe the opposite of what the Most High commands. So today, I can't even watch a cartoon of my son without seeing everything dominated, dominated by females. Okay. All these superheroes are females. You barely see, I haven't seen a king on, on a cartoon in a long time. Everything I see is a queen, it's a queen. I, I had to explain to my son what a king was. I called him a prince. He got mad, I thought I called him a princess. I said, no, son, a prince is mm. one who was a king. <clears throat> Because he don't see it. Kind. He don't see it. All, he should, all, he, all Satan shows on TV Princess is women. And queens. Kind. Ruling. Mm. Toward everything. You, know, you go to these schools. Women are ruling the school. Women are ruling everything. And believe it or not, you can say, you know, these men run this world. They don't. They don't. <laughs> the woman that, that sleeps on the side of them is running the world. Oh, with Satan. Oh, okay? Let's keep reading. We next, next precept. Next mm-hmm. precept. First Timothy chapter two, verse nine. Yeah, that, was, that was a great uh, comparison, a great analogy dealing with the relationship between Christ and the Most High. Because a lot of people in the world, especially in the Christian <coughs> faith, believe that Christ and God are either the same or that they equal. They don't recognize that they have to understand that Christ is. The Most High is over Christ, so we have to reverence that and understand that as well, and that helps us put the rest of the order that the Most High laid out in perspective. Because a lot of times they 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 generally use the terms Christ and God; they use them interchangeably, not really understanding who they are, who Christ is, what His purpose is, and the fact that the Most High made Him and gives Christ uh, His objectives. Christ does the will of the Most High, so you you wouldn't do the will of somebody if you weren't. Subservient to them, you know. So uh-huh. that's 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 really that's really necessary to internalize. Oh, thank you. So Next precept, First Timothy chapter <coughs> two, verse nine through fifteen. So now, as we read these precepts, these scriptures, it will all flow in harmony, as it's as it's supposed to. We're not adding anything from it or taking anything away. We're just speaking God's word. Okay. And it reads. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now check this out. <laughs> I remember going to a funeral a couple of years ago. Right? <laughs> they had a female pastor. The skirt was so tight, she had to put a jacket over his knees. Right? Now, if you had to put a jacket over your knees, it can't be mine. Right? Skin tight, though. Mine's apparel is not skin tight apparel. Okay. You've been in all your pictures. All your ladies. Right? So it's telling women to adorn themselves in mine's apparel. Apparel is the purpose of the goods the most high giving you. You're not supposed to be out here showing your body off to the world. Mm. <laughs> Which we have, we have things going right now. Show the pictures. Well, y'all oh, know I, I can show them. <laughs> but they people from Saginaw. Oh, they from Saginaw. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Read. <coughs> Verse nine. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness. With shamefacedness. Let's get that for me. Right. This goes <coughs> back to what I was saying about being slow to speak. Right. Modesty, bashfulness, reverence. Like when you're bashful, you're hesitant. Right? You're <coughs> hesitant. Right now, our women are forceful. Forceful. But understand, Satan is the god of the air. So on TV, why do you think on every television? <coughs> These women are acting as, as they're acting, which is contrary to what God commands them. They're forceful with their opinions, disrespectful, arguing constantly, can't get along, can't go to the store together without fighting on these television shows. No. That's not being shamefaced, being humble, modest, reserved. 
preserved. Next priest, I mean, keep reading. With shamefacedness and sobriety. Sobriety, let's get out of <coughs> Soundness of mind. Self-control. Women are, to, are supposed to be control their emotions. <coughs> women, like, women are led by emotions in this world. We have self-control. So if you got something to say, say this. For the opportune time. Use wisdom. You don't always just got to blow out what you think. Especially in the church. Save it. There's a time and place and a way to do everything. So control yourself. Uh, right? Read. Not with broidered hair or gold or pearls or costly arrays. And there's nothing wrong with women braiding their hair. Twisting your hair. There's nothing wrong with wearing jewelry. But most high is saying, let not what you can do on the outside of you define you. <coughs> let, let not that be what you think make you beautiful. Mm. Today, that's what women focus on. And honestly, to, to, to liken that to what Christ said about these fake pastors. Mm -hmm. You're like an open sepulcher full of dead man bones. Mm. Outside, you're beautiful. Inside, you're like dead man bones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I real fast. Also, just like how the Pharisees were wearing the extravagant, expensive garments and stuff and praying in front of everybody to seem more holy, it also seems apparent that it's explained in here uh, don't do it for attention. So don't let this wearing all this gold and all this, this braided hair and beautifying yourself up be to draw <coughs> massive amounts of attention because that's the opposite of being shame faced and modest. And ask uh. yourself. When you go buy that little hot dress you got on that, you know, go up to your thigh. Mm. Why are you doing this? Mm. When you put it on, what's in your mind? You don't feel it. The most high said that these women do this to entice men to sin. You're not thinking modestly. You're trying to attract the opposite. In a lot of cases, you're checking the, 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 the same too. Mm -hmm. But this is what defines you. This is what you use as a lure to entice men or women to sin. Then you act like that ain't what you're doing. Even back when I was a kid, now it, I'm not for, I'm against as a Bible to get raping people. But even back in the day, people understood. So when someone did they will get a, get uh, attacked. The first thing they say, well, you, well, she shouldn't have been dressing like that. Because see, uh -huh. the clothes have something to do with other people who are weak-minded, sick-minded okay. actions. Okay. But if you dress modestly, you're not putting visuals in this individual's mind. But outside of the sickness, though, you know, when you wear your skimpy clothes, you're doing it ultimately for attention. What well, the Bible is going to say in a minute, let the inward man, the inward one be what a church <coughs> Okay? Not the outward. Read. Verse 10, but which becometh, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. See, that's the difference. This is for women who are professing godliness. Being holy, <coughs> being set apart, being clean. Pure, righteous, upright, virtuous. Outside of that, this is what they do. They're going to wear a little hot dress and blue skirt, you know, little, little leggings and all that stuff that, you know, destroy your whole cookie jar. But, but this message is for those who are professing godliness. <laughs> the whole thing. Really the whole job. thing. You know? Okay. Verse 11. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. He's telling the women role is to learn, not to teach. And in all subjection. Not just to their husbands, but to the elders and to the deacons of the church. Even to the brethren in the church who don't have a title. That man is still over you. Okay. Let women learn 
in all subjection. Not once <coughs> you read where you teach, but you learn in all subjection. Now you can fight this if you want to. You're fighting against the most high. Right? Read. Verse 12. But I suffer not a woman to teach. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Now let's skip for a minute. Let's go to the thanks. Say where you at. We'll go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. I'm going to read this so you understand these are not Paul's words. It says, all scriptures is given by inspiration of God. So whether you believe the Bible is true or not, you can't say that what Paul said this. Do you believe that all scriptures, do you not believe that Paul was inspired to say this? Or you don't believe the Bible. Or you don't believe the Most High. It says, let the women learn in silence with all subjection. <coughs> but I suffer, I allow not a woman to teach, nor to usurp the authority over the man. So the man divinely has authority as we learned in Genesis. Dominion, govern, rulership. So any woman who calls herself a deacon, this or deacon, Pastor, preacher, whatever you call yourself, you have done something that is a grave sin. You have usurped the divine authority of the man. And most high does not care about your vain imagination <coughs> that you created in your heart. Because you feel you're special and you went to school to, to, for religion. That you're supposed to be teaching over men. How can you teach out of the same Bible that commands you not to teach out of it? Come on, teach. Three? Yeah. Yes, sir. Can you go ahead and finish out 16, 2 Timothy 3 16? Sure. Let me finish out 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scriptures <coughs> are given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. For correction. So right now we are reproving and correcting these Jezebels who call themselves pastors. Kind. Through the scriptures. That's what it's for. Instructions in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Mm -hmm. Anything you remember? Yeah, okay. Don't you have to hit that? Yes. What they do is. Um, when they use the word man, they'll say that it's man and woman. That's how they make it to where a woman can teach. Where? Uh -huh. No, that's what they do with the word man. They don't any all the time when they're in the Bible, they <coughs> use it man and woman as you well, know hey, together. Strange thing is, verse eleven says, "Let the women learn in silence and yeah. all, with all suggestion." It says, "But I suffer not a woman." Mm -hmm. Uh, I get it. It. You know it makes the separation. Yeah. That's why it's it's precept on precept. Because see, that's that's <coughs> a vain imagination. Mm -hmm. You taking the word men and say it's about mankind. mankind yeah. Where the Bible right here says woman and and then it also says, uh, but I suffer not a woman to, to teach. teach. Authority mm -hmm. over man. I get it. It, it. it don't say, but I suffer not a man to teach. Right, it says right, right. woman. W O M A N. <coughs> Okay, <laughs> let's clear by that thing. Okay, let's hear it. And then it's gonna explain why we went to Genesis 3.16. Hmm. The original order, like Christ said. How is it in the beginning? Let's read. How is it in the beginning? Let's get it. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor <coughs> usurp the authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first born, then Eve. For Adam was first born, then Eve. <laughs> <laughs> Break it down to you. Kind. Now, that's mankind. Women kind. and men and women. Mm -hmm. Adam was first born. Kind. He was the first king of the earth. Kind. He didn't create a second king. He created he created a queen. Kind. <coughs> Let's get help me. Mm -hmm. Why are you 
That Eve that we just talked about said so Adam was created first. Then he created a Adam a help meet. That means aid, help. The aid is not the boss. Uh huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, God. The aid yeah, is not the boss. <coughs> Adam was formed first. On, the brother is breaking it down to you from the beginning. But you women have been programmed thoroughly by Satan. Mm -hmm. Thoroughly. You think you are the boss. I'm telling you, none of you, I don't care those who are in the truth. Call yourself righteous. If you don't treat God's image right, you will make it to the kingdom. God. If you disrespect your husband, trust me, I don't care how y'all feel, how y'all feel inside. This is how you <coughs> serve your soul by being respectful, obedient to your husband. The most I said that's that's a great wealth. That's a great price for you. To control yourself. That's what it says, self-control. To control your emotions and be obedient to your husband. But see, women don't want to get it up, though. Satan has given you authority. But you don't want to give it up. It's like these Gentiles don't, don't want to give up their kingdom. Y'all don't want to give y'all little rulership. Oh, y'all little God. thing which are going on in Satan's system either. The Bible says you think too much of yourself. Uh, but it's a hard pill to swallow. But if you can't get the kingdom of heaven, you got to swallow it. Even if your husband is wrong. Let him be wrong and let the most high judge him. Okay. But the Bible tells you to keep your conduct and <coughs> your conduct chaste. You save your own soul by being obedient to your husband. Not to those like that's in the church. Outside the, the Bible, the church, y'all do what, what y'all been doing. So I pray the most high's will that he bring y'all in, into this church. For this Bible is written to the congregation. Okay. Not to the world. Those women, those women that profess to be God. This is who I'm talking to. The little Jezebel that's hanging out the night in the club, I ain't talking to you. <coughs> so move on. Yeah. If, if the shoes don't fit, don't yes, wear it. That's right. But we're talking to y'all who, who claim to be serving Christ and be so-called Christians and disciples of Christ. Those who call yourself pastors, oh, be Praying and teaching over men, you're dead wrong. Read. Really? And Adam was not deceived, but the woman, being deceived, was in the transgression. Now with sin, <coughs> she shall be saved in childbearing. Childbearing. Let's get that. Maternal duties, the, the performance of maternal duties. <clears throat> Women, he has blessed you to carry his children in your wombs, to, to nourish, to teach his children about him, to show as an example your, your daughters how to be virtuous young ladies. Show your daughter how she is to treat her righteous husband when she grew up to select and to, to, to be married, that she would marry someone like her righteous father. Teach her the, the duties and how to keep house, how to cook, how to clean, how to be a virtue, how to be a woman, <coughs> according to the most high. <coughs> and to be a mother. To your sons. Not you teaching your son how to be a man. That's what the, the, and that's the beautiful thing. My brother and I was talking about this yesterday. One thing about this truth is it promotes families. Yes. We get young men who have come out of the world, got into this Bible, found a help me, married in the Lord. And the most high has blessed both of them with children. 
Uh, and blessing them with children. That will be the most high. We will come up in the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the most high in Christ. And of themselves. To see an example of how it's supposed to go. The father, the mother, and the child. As in heaven, also on earth. Divine order. Divine order. <coughs> uh. The sister just spoke. See? We condemn her. She's not teaching the class. Right? But he put hand up in the air, though. Next time. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, oh, oh, that's another thing. These Jewish people have, have really, you know, tainted the image of the Most High. I just said, as in heaven, also on earth. Most of the world don't know <coughs> that the Most High has a queen. Okay. She's called the mother of all spirits. And I reckon he, call, he calls her wisdom. In Hebrew, Owak Kadash, the Holy Spirit. Mm. So there's the Most High, the Holy Spirit, child. His image is all over the earth. Everything there's male, female, life. That's the divine order. Now you can tell me if the Holy Spirit is up there cussing out the Most High. <laughs> <laughs> I hear a great falling. <laughs> that'd, be the, that'd be the last star that fell. That's right. <laughs> and you let fall. Oop, oop. Right? Huh. And, and the Holy Spirit ain't that pointing a finger at the most high. Mm. She's a servant to him. Mm. She loves him. All his ways are pure and righteous. She talks about her husband, her creator. Mm. <clears throat> She's always at work. The earth was beautified through her passion. Let's keep going. Mm. But that's the greatest example, women, for, for you to learn from. Your mother. She's the mother of all spirits, and there's a spirit inside you that she's the mother of. Okay. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. If she play her part, continue in the faith. <coughs> Now, what you disrespect your husband, you're some out of the faith. Mm -hmm. Whether you believe it or not. Once you disobey your husband, you have discontinued from the faith. Mm. The same way that husband disrespect or disobey Christ. He has, he is no longer in the faith. He has to do what? Repent. Sincerely. But you can't be repenting every other every other five minutes. Okay? It says in faith. And charity, love, holiness. Let's see what holiness is. Properly purification, that is the state, purity, consecrated by Hebrewism, <coughs> and a purified, holiness, sanctification, meaning that you are what? Blameless. Perfect. Separate from the women of the world who are defiled, filthy, as the Most High calls them, harlots. Mm. Read. Next precept, it was with sobriety. Let's get sobriety. Again, self control. <coughs> Silence of mind. Soberness. Okay. Next precept, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, and verse 8 through 9. Think Christ is God. This is what the scriptures say. Okay. Let's get it. <coughs> Verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Now what you just heard is called divine order. The head of every man is Christ. The head of every woman is man. <coughs> And for all those who believe that Christ is God, the Bible didn't say that. 
It says Christ had a head. Someone, let's see what head means. It ain't sound different than what we're than what we're saying. Right? So as we spoke about dominion, <coughs> authority. So the most high have authority over Christ. That's why Christ says that the Father loves him because he always do the things that are pleasing to him. He said that he can do nothing except the Father permits him. As his father speaks, he do. That's not like someone that's obedient to someone greater than him. Okay. See? So this is an example that we're supposed to follow in. We're supposed to do the things that Christ commands us to do. Okay. Not do our own thing, but as Christ commands us, as his Father commands him to command us, we follow the, the chain of order. So women, you have to do the same. Right? Okay. Read. So like, yes. I just pulled up head in the Hebrew. I think it just gives a better definition than the Greek did. Right. And it says, properly headship um, that is for, <coughs> for collective dominion, principality. Dominion. So, again, what wives, quit fighting it. You know, your husband has dominion. Even the Bible says that the, your your body belongs to your husband. And your husband's body belongs to you. Okay. Right? <coughs> so, women. The one who has dominion over Christ... It's the most high. Mm -hmm. Say it again. The men who has to mean over us, the most high and his sons, Yahshua. Okay? Women who have to mean over you, the most <coughs> high, Yahshua, and your husband. Mm -hmm. Okay? The Bible says, when be subjected, be just into your, your husband as into the Lord. So if your husband was Christ, that's how you're supposed to treat him. But see, you know. That's the internal fight that Satan got y'all struggling with. But that's what the Bible says. This is how you get into the kingdom. Now you decide for yourself. Do you want the kingdom or not? Or do you want your dominion right now? <coughs> you, I mean, you want to rule your husband right now. And let that, you know, stop you from getting in, in, in God's kingdom. So you'll get your point across. That's not the example that you're, that, that, as the Bible says, the holy woman old left behind. <coughs> okay? Read. Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man, which we just read. The man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. The woman is for the man. The woman is a gift, an aid to the man. Not the other way around. Really? Why do you think Satan has attacked the man and has has brought us down so low? We all, most of our men are effeminate. Half of them are effeminate, the other one's gay. Now, if those who know what effeminate is, that's a man acting like a woman. Yeah. Or a woman acting like a man. And the other half is gay, who have made the decision. <coughs> So why do you think Satan has attacked God's men so thoroughly as he has done? Why? Think about that. Right? Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. That's true, sir. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 20 through, 22 through 24. Now, this is going to be a quick, a, a, a quick lesson. It's going to be long as the other ones that y'all confess to be. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a quick lesson, so y'all don't have to get out of the time to Let's get finished first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, Love y'all too. Yeah, I'm quiet. <laughs> Better raise your hand. Right, right, right. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22. 
Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Say again, man. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Let me, let me ask y'all, I'm here out of y'all mouth. What does it mean? Sisters, I'm talking to y'all, you're on your mouth all day. Say it be silent in church. <laughs> anyway, what does it mean be, to be subject to your husband as unto the Lord? <coughs> Will that be uh, my hand raised? Okay, good. <laughs> Will that be uh, be subjective to him, respectful, and obedient to him as you are to the Most High? Okay. Now check it out. I'm going to read the precept to it. <coughs> uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 5. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters. Now what's another word for master in the Bible? Lord. Lord. What does Sarah call Abel? Lord. Lord. Master. Owner. Right? Mm -hmm. It says, uh, your master is according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart, as unto Christ. So, ask yourself, is this how you operate? Wives. That's what I was talking to her about. Is this how you operate? Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> As y'all say, kudos to you. Or as, as his wife say, kudos to you. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was ready to go down. Uh, let's get it. But I'm serious. No, no this, is, this is not a light manner, though. This is how y'all make it to the kingdom. Huh? The world will take you different, but this is what the Bible This is how you make it to the kingdom. That's right. You know. So like I said, a woman cannot be virtuous if she don't, if she don't treat the image of the most high as the <coughs> is. How you virtuous, but you just say his, his head, his son, yes. Yes, I believe, like, if this, the Bible had been taught properly in the beginning, like, for my generation, you know, like, you're learning it now, mm -hmm. and you would have been more equally yoked when you find, you know, you know like a man finds a good thing mm -hmm. once he finds a good thing. Mm -hmm. If we had been more properly yoked and everything, we, you know, there would have been so many baby mama dramas and stuff right. like that coming up. I'm gonna just like like the sister said that she um, believed that in in her time that if the Bible was <coughs> properly taught, uh, more people would be equally yoked. There wouldn't be these baby mamas and baby mamas and that kind of stuff. Let me just let's, let's just clear, let's just clarify that if our people were <coughs> not taking God's law, mm -hmm. that would be the case because when our people follow the law, this this is how we operate. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's why the Bible tells me to refer y'all to the holy women of old. Mm -hmm. Refer us to the holy men of old. Come, come so on. Men to learn how to be men to the most high, and women to be learn, learn how to be women to the, to the most high. <coughs> we learned yesterday about how the men were. The men were not like they are right now. Come. Okay? No comparison. Mm -hmm. I was telling them, it's amazing how, how like buff, on a physical level, how buff the brothers were. Mm -hmm. they, they, they carry swords and breastplates and, and weaponry mm -hmm. and walking for miles. No, and fight for hours. <coughs> this is a man. Well, no, see, just imagine the condition of the Oh, yeah. He's in shape, shape. shape. <laughs> 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 she said, he says, easy to be submissive to some of us. Huh. Like <laughs> 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's like, yes, sir. Yes, Master. Yes, Lord. Yes, Mama. No, you be like, yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, yes, Lord. Mama. <laughs> you be glad to call him Lord. Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Oh, God. Let's get it. Oh, man. Verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own <coughs> husbands in everything. So again, as Christ is, has dominion of the church, head of the church, this is how the wives must operate according to their husbands. In the husbands, how do we rule over our wives? Righteously. Mm -hmm. When we come to how we operate, it must be the law of the most high. Uh, every matter that, every judgment that we make, it must be scriptural. Mm -hmm. We can't rule our household with worthy counsel. Everything that, that we encounter in this world is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. This is instructions, like the Bible says, and again, we'll go right back there. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It says, for instructions in righteousness. So these are our instructions in how to be righteous. So all our, our, our decisions, it says, 
Consider the most high in all our ways. So we have issues at, at home, issues within ourselves. We must consider the most high. And these, this Bible is instruction and right. This is how we make our decisions. Does the most high agree with this or does he not? <coughs> you don't agree with this, husband. We are we have to operate outside or contrary to the law. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the law is, is, is this not a, a, a sacrifice? The law is the most high's counsels. That's why we see when, when Paul says, according to the law, as the law says, we're, we're back to Genesis three sixteen. The law, God's word, God's word is the law. But these churches have taught us that, that, that His law <coughs> is animal sacrifice. That's this. That's the serve. That's part of the, that's the sacrificial law, which is done away with. But God's word is not done away with. The law is his mouth. The word is from his mouth. As in the law, it says, men must not live on every offer up. Men must not live on bread alone. But <coughs> on every other man coming out of the most high's mouth. That's the law. What the most high said is the law. He is the king. He, he has a king. <coughs> What he says go. That's the law. Okay? That's what the law really means. Okay? He gave Adam his word, his law. As Paul just confirmed. Read. Let's precept Titus chapter 2, verses 3 through 5. Okay. Okay. And it reads, the aged women likewise, that that they be in behavior as become as holiness. See, this is the commandment for the women. Because <coughs> those who don't know, the church is supposed to be a family. So it says, women, it says, women, men are over the women. Not this, the husband now, can, can we our brothers tell my wife to do something? Yeah, y'all can. And she is to be obedient. Now, when it comes to our household, that's a different matter. Uh, okay, but if you see my wife operating contrary to the law, you have authority by the most high to correct my, my wife. Uh, Not this me. Say that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously though. Yes. So the Bible says that we belong to each other. Uh, now, are you to get into my household matters? No, you're no. not. That's uh, not your place. Uh, so it's showing us how we operate. We're <laughs> in this church, all the men are supposed to be big brothers, uncles, fathers, all that. Women, grandmamas, mamas, aunties, sisters, all that. It's what the church must be, a family. Mm -hmm. Okay? <coughs> Read. The, uh, so, the, all women, mm -hmm. this is how you're supposed to lead back. This is how you teach within the church. Read. That they... That they be in behavior as become with holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things. He says, Holy holiness, the precept said, Holy women, righteous women. Your behavior must be righteous within the church. Read. Really? That they may teach the young women to be sober. Teach who? The young women. The young men. The young women. Teach who? The young women. The young women, women. That's what you teach the young women. And for those who don't know, when it says iron, sharpen iron, it's not just by word, it's by deed. Uh -huh. Iron sharpens iron. So the young women are sharpened by the example of the older women. The young men are sharpened by the example of the older men. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Really? That they may teach the young women to be sober in the concordance uh, in the center column it also says wise. 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 I mean, how can you wise according to the most high? Obedient to him. Mm -hmm. Read. To love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient. Keeping at home, remember those maternal duties, performance of maternal duties? This is what, and, and women hate this. It, he'll make me bad for the pregnant. <laughs> Look, okay, I, we understand, okay, this is where some time is <coughs> Most of our men are locked up. Women, you got to go out of work. We don't own anything anymore. But all in all, you know, keep us at home. You go to work in a husband because of the unbalanced husbands, we are supposed to help them balance it out. A man is not just supposed to sit at home and say, you, you know, you clean this, the house up for me, and I'm going to sit here and play video games all night. Watch the game. Go Watch the game all night. Go hang out all night. 
<laughs> you ain't did nothing. You ain't picked up a fork, left your bowl, your plate, everything, glass on the table. She done worked eight hours and, and you've been home all day. Is that loving your wife as you love yourself? Uh, no, it's not. Seriously, it's not. Back to do something, pick up a do something. Now, I ain't, I'm gonna tell you, I be tired, but I, I do laundry. I'm gonna go laundry this night, too. <laughs> you doing what? Laundry. So you do laundry every day. Right. right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just saying, husbands, we are to help, okay? <coughs> and, and you will find that if you help, you know, it's, it's better for you. Yeah, kind You know? But if you think the woman who works is supposed to just come home and do everything, it'd be hard for the woman to do what the Bible say do. But on all, yeah. if it comes <coughs> down to it, though, then that woman is, is to do what the Bible say do. Like I said, let the most high deal with that brother. Right. Let him talk to that brother hard and say, you know what? The Bible says I'm going to love you like, like, like I love my, my son. What can I do to help? Right. See? So, let's get it. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. So how can you say that you are so far Christian, a disciple of Christ, but you're not acting as the Bible says? Mm -hmm. See? Because if you act contrary to the scriptures, men and women, the word of God is blasphemy. Ready? Oh, that's it on that preacher. So, like, okay. real quick, can I get two? Because yeah. it just goes right in line with how you were saying earlier how the men have become effeminate. And uh, I thought about the last precept when you were, when they dealt with the women and just talking about the sobriety, that self control in a lot of situations, even our so called hard street <coughs> men that's rough. A lot of them are uh, very emotional in their actions as well. It says that the aged men be sober, grave, and temperate. A lot of it's no self-control exercise even in those men who are sought to be like kind of rough naked. There's no self-control there as well. And another thing which says grave, I mean honest. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's another thing. You know, this, this being so-called gangster don't, don't, don't make you a man. Make you a man at all. At all. Teach! Like he said, they really riding off emotions. Yeah, they riding off emotions. So, like we see, like I, I say this all, all the time. Most of the men that's in prison got to have to, when you when you break it all the way down, it got to something to do with a woman. Mm -hmm. That man had caught his feelings about something about this woman, mm -hmm. and he did something that led him to prison. Whether he was selling drugs <coughs> to buy things, as we talked about early, women y'all like little little, little not y'all, but hopefully not y'all. Little tight dresses and the and the, you know, to the the, uh, the top with the you know with the cleavage all hanging out, you know. This, this brother is selling dope. This 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 dope is his cleavage out or this tight skirt. It's what he's doing to attract you. Cause oh no, he's trying to buy toys, cars, rims, you no know, clothes, shoes, you know, jewelry to attract you. So he can see him. So on and on, it all ties in to see him. Fornication. So fornication, the desire to fornicate, has got many people killed and locked up. Reese? Next precept, First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. Too, like verse says, self-control. <coughs> right? And the Bible says, that, look at, this law is so wonderful. The Bible says, if you have an ought with you, feel your, your brother or sister have an ought with you, go to them and be reconciled to your brother. Then come to the altar, or then go pray, or give your so called gift to the most high. The brother brought these uh, roughnecks out for a reason. He, he said, um, Be stop, be self controlled. If these brothers put down the pride, something that the most high hates, and it's talk to the person that they heard had a problem with them, a lot of folks would still be living. Mm. Right? The Bible says don't be a tailbearer. Right? Most of the stuff that you hear in the street are lies anyway. So people have, have have done great horrible actions to people because of what they heard. Right? So, but if you have self-control, you will control your emotions and act on facts, not hearsay sheep. Mm -hmm. Okay? But well, let's get it. Uh, first Peter. Chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. 
not keep saying the same thing to the sisters, though? Uh, and the testimony of two more witnesses, every man is established. established. Okay, you about, about six witnesses already we can have. <laughs> but let's go. It reads, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. We know what conversation means, conduct and speech. So mm -hmm. if you have to, you know, have been worthy, been married, came into the truth, one of, you know, if, if it's the wife or it's the husband that's, that's not in the truth, by your conduct, by your obedience to the most high, that's, that's, that's something too. But those who are unevenly yoked, the scripture is not telling you to be obedient to your husband over the most high. If your husband or your wife is, is trying to uh, entice you to do things contrary to what most high say, he is your head. The author is. He follows what the most high say do. You know, and let the most high deal with that brother or that sister, but you cannot obey your husband or your wife over God. None of us. Okay? You can't obey nothing over the most high. Okay? But it says that, you, that, that your husband may be one, the most high may show you favor. And bring your husband or your wife into this truth because of how you could address them. You know, when, when your husband who's unbelieving or your wife who's unbelieving see you and truthfully can't really accurately blame you for anything. Not saying they won't blame you or stuff, <coughs> but they are blaming you for things. Let those things be lies. And eventually, through consistency, you know, they'll stop fighting. Be like, okay, just don't argue anymore. <coughs> you don't argue anymore. Sister ain't do this no more. She ain't do that no more. She ain't do this no more. Eventually, you know, that will draw the, the curiosity out of anybody. <coughs> but let your conduct, your way you conduct yourself, the way you speak, how you operate, speak for itself. Let it be godly. Okay? Read. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Coupled with fear of the most high. Mm -hmm. Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plaguing the hair. And of wearing of gold or of putting on apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is who, in the, wait, wait, a meek and quiet spirit. What has Satan taught these women? What kind of spirit they have? Wild and boisterous. It's not meek and, and loud. loud and boisterous. He said, "Wild too." <laughs> <laughs> you know, but. Good. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, a great price, of great price. For after this manner, in the old <coughs> of, great of great price, of great price, there's a great reward if you conduct yourself according to what the Most High commands you. There's a great reward. Right? For after this manner, <coughs> in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Calling him Lord, owner, master, king. Three. Whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. As long as you are the daughter of Sarah, if you do well. If you're not, you're the daughter of Jezebel. Daughter of a, 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 a Ishtar. What's, what's her name? <laughs> what's her what's sister's name? Queen. Yeah, uh, Queen Esther. Uh, not Esther. Uh, Esther. Uh, Ishtar. What's, what's her, what's her name? name? Uh, who? 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 Latifa. Vesta. Vesta. Was it Vashi? Vashi. I knew it was Vashi or Vesta. Vashi. She said, Queen Latifah. <laughs> she in that spirit, too. She ain't lying. Yeah. 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 Anyway, let's get it. Queen Latifah. <laughs> right, Next precept, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. No, this is 7. <laughs> verse 7. Oh, yeah. 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. I'm off the page. Okay. It says, likewise, he heard it. Dwell well according to knowledge. What knowledge? The law. Giving honor unto the wife. How do we give honor to a wife? If you honor something, you what? <laughs> you cherish it. You respect it. Mm -hmm. So are we to treat our wives in a dogmatic way? Not at all. Uh, are we to treat, can we, are we, are we to tell our wives, 
You can't tell me nothing, woman. Because that's, that's not showing them honor. That's not showing them respect. Respect. That's not loving them as you love yourself. Okay. As unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So, brothers, if we're not treating our wives as we love ourselves, our prayers are not heard by the Most High. We're not honoring and respecting, cherishing our wives. I mean that. This is just nothing. I've met so many brothers who are needs of a woman. Okay. A woman is a great gift to have. But your life does not depend on a woman. Okay. I mean, it's too many brothers out here reverencing these women. Uh, like they're gods or something. Whole life revolves around the woman. Your whole life must be born around the most high in Christ. Um, seriously, brothers, enough is enough. As I said, you were created first, and she was created as a gift to you, as an aid to you. But how y'all operating, like she's a guy, and, and for you who think a woman is a guy, show me that in the Bible. <coughs> it's a doctor. Mm -hmm. Woman is a guy. Please. Christ called his, his, his creator Father. Outside the Father, you know, any other guy is a fallen angel. Okay. Now, are, there, are there female fallen angels? Yes, it is. The Muslims worship one. <coughs> okay? Let's get it. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. Okay. And it reads, This is a true saying. If a man. Wait, wait, wait. Now take it out. Sisters. Who call themselves pastors, bishops, deacons, evangelists, evangelists. deaconess, prophetess. If for those who understand most of the so called prophets, <coughs> you know what prophetess really means? A wife of a prophet. Yeah. Okay. That's what they call it, sir. Yeah, you're not a wife of a prophet. But here's the divine instructions. To who? Brother Reed. This is a true saying. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, if he. a man, now this is what Sister brought earlier. It's not talking about mankind. It specifically, specifically said, if a man. Desires the office of a bishop. He, not she, desires a good word. Get that? That's the New Testament. New Testament, Pete. If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desires a good word. Read. He desires a good word. A bishop then must be blameless. Wait, hold on now. Your pastor must be blameless. Mm. You're not supposed to be enough to give him the pastor's sins. So, oh, so he just a man. Ain't nobody perfect. Blameless means one that's not <coughs> sinning, breaking God's law. First, you must be blameless. Okay? And I can't find a blameless pastor in the city of Saginaw. Because not one of them are keeping God's laws. They are teaching that God's law is in a way. When the Bible, when Christ says the heaven and earth pass, not one jot of tittle should pass from his law. And as far as last I checked, I'm looking at the moon outside right now with the stars. If most I will, we live until the sun come up, he will come up, he will come up again. Okay. Then it says, he that should break one of the least commandments and teach men. So, so I reckon he's talking to you, pastors who's breaking God's law, and is teaching that his law is done away with. Christ warned us about you. But you are the same one who has allowed these Jezebels to become teachers in the church. Three. A bishop then must be blameless, <clears throat> the husband of one wife. Now, check this out. If this man right here, like the sister brought up, was dealing with mankind, how can this prefer to mankind when it's specifically saying, 
this man that desires this good work of being a bishop, it says, must be the husband of one wife. Husband and wife are two different things. Okay. It didn't say a wife of one husband. It says, if this, if a man desires to be a pastor, a <coughs> Christian, one that is a leader in the church, call him what you want to call him. He must be the husband of one wife. Mm -hmm. Yes. It didn't say spouse of one mate. Thank you. It didn't say spouse of one mate. So I don't know how y'all get it twisted when this is the divine order, instructions of how one must be to be considered in a leader with leader, leadership of the church. <coughs> Read. Vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, and apt to teach. Apt to teach. Given to good behavior. The only way you behave good is if you follow the laws of the Most High. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have to teach what? The law. Not your own life. Not what's going on in the world. Not to teach philosophies. Not to teach you what these Jewish people have told you to teach, but the law of God. Which we're going to break down and show you the holy men of old, how they operate. Read. Not given to wine. Now that would mean that you can't drink. Not being a drunkard. Not getting. That means. Give yourself over to wine, mm -hmm. being a drunkard. Read. <coughs> no striker, not greed of filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. Not what covetous. covetous. Desire is greedy. What is greedy? And most, not my saying all you pass, but most of y'all are greedy. <laughs> for filthy <laughs> lucre, like I said, for you to do, do his work for filthy lucre's sake. You know? And I just not, it, 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 it's just strange to me. How I read the Apostle Paul, who was a great minister, working with his own hands. I have not found a, 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 a minister in the Bible who became rich off the people. That, that was righteous. Peter, the head of the church, was not one sitting back riding around, you know, you know, on a camel with 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 Golden um, <laughs> things on the bottom of the camel feet. Horseshoes. Horseshoes. Right on the camel. Right around like he's royalty or something. Last I checked, he is running for his life. Yeah. Why are you sitting back back? Mm. Would you be a minister of Satan? Because <coughs> yeah. Christ says, hey, if he, if he was of the world, the world would love his own. Why is your lifestyle different than, than the apostles and, and the pastors and the, and the disciples and the priests and the prophets of the Bible? You know? Work with your own hands. Right? The tithes and stuff aren't to, you know, to, to, you know, help the church out. Not for pastors, you know, talking about he needs a new jet. Or he needs a bigger house. He needs his two thousand dollar suit. These thousand dollar shoes. That's not what the time is for. Okay, read. Verse four. One that ruleth well his own house. One that ruleth well his, his own house. So you know, it's not talking about a woman. This is the one where it's to be the keeper of home, who's obedient in suggestion to a husband. But this husband must be, must rule his own household well. So it's just breaking it down and showing you there's no place for a woman to teach in the Bible. Three. Having his children in subjection with all gravity. Having his children in subjection to the Most High in all honesty, humbleness. <coughs> for if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? If a man knows not how to rule his own house, and uh, uh, Tara, we on um, <coughs> first chance? Yeah. First chance? Yeah. Okay. If a man knows not how to rule his own house, it is say, if a woman knows not how to rule her own house, how can she rule the church of God? It says men. Okay? Read. Not a novice. Not someone that's new to the faith. 
So you don't find them out the street who've been in church three months and make them elders. <laughs> or for you want to be elders, you know, you don't read four chapters of the Bible now you're on YouTube because of a, because of a teacher. Hmm. Okay, read. Let's being lifted up with pride and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Hmm. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach in the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be great. That's what's going on right now. These, mm. these people don't have no good report out, outside of church. They say, you know, you know, uh, Pat Sussa got baby uh, on the way back, uh, you know, this person. I was sleeping with, 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 with these three sisters up in the church. That's not a good report. Right. You know? Say what? Say the whole pack, no crying, fat too. You look town, you have a whole church full of them. It's more the uh, Elijah Muhammad type stuff. <laughs> Let's go. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into the reproach and the snares of the devil. Hmm. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, hmm. not double tongued, hmm. not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre. So I need to keep some of this filthy lucre. You see what these pastors. You no, know, they, they don't. That doesn't apply to them, though. Mm -mm. You know, riding around in Range Rovers and Sage Benzes, you know, Jaguars, mm -hmm. you know, <coughs> got these little fishing boats, you know, bass <laughs> boats. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And if they had the money to buy it for themselves, that would be all right, but they're taking it from. But see, you said if they had the money to buy it for themselves, they would buy what I'm talking about. So if you had the money to buy what you want, that's on you. <coughs> this is coming from the church's money. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Because like you're not working, you're sitting here getting ripped off the church. Uh -huh. The church is working, can't pay their light bill, right. but the pastor's riding around here, you know, in a bit Yes. So you said you don't call 24 hours, you didn't get time to work from the eight hour job. The pastor said you don't call 24 hours, you get time to work eight hour job. He made well, house calls. He made house calls. He's he a milkman. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, what, what are you counseling them with? Visiting the sick and the children. Right, right. Look at it. Holding the, misery, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Hmm. And let these also first be proved. Let these also first be <coughs> proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Being found blameless. One that is a law keeper. Get it? That's what's kind of, that, 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 that kills Christianity right there. None of them are blaming because they don't, they don't teach it or do the law. So how are you blameless? You teach that you can't be blameless. It's impossible. When Christ commands us to be perfect. Uh -huh. All right. Next. Even so must their wives be great, not slanders, sober and faithful in all things. Even your wives must be honest. Not slanders, sober. Sign the mind, faithful in all things. See? Read. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased themselves to a good degree in great boldness in the faith which is in Yahshua. Hey, hey. The brothers is just breaking it down. <coughs> So if, if you are in the church with a female pastor, you are in the den of hell. Okay? For real. And if you are in the church with a pastor that's not teaching the law, so the commandments, nor doing them again, you are in the den of hell. Okay? Let's preach that. Where are we going? The book of Ezra, chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. So we use the whole Bible. Show you how... The New Testament is in harmony with the Old Testament. For those who think it's something different. Chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 8 and it reads, Now in the second year of their coming into the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month, began Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, Shealtiel, <coughs> And Jeshua, the son of jo Josadak, and the remnant of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, 
and all that were come out of the captivity unto Jerusalem, and appointed the Levites from twenty years old and upward to set forth the work of the house of the Most High. Then stood Jeshua with his sons and his brethren, Cadmiel and his sons, the sons of Judah, together to set forward the workmen in the house of God, the sons of Hanadad with their sons and the brethren, the Levites. And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Most High, they set the priests in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asa, with cymbals, to praise the Most High after the ordinance of David, king of Israel. Did y'all get that? This is what, this is part of, remember, remember some, some of how some, some of these Hebrew camps teach the three doctrine? But this is showing you in the scriptures that they use, these are some of the brethren that so-called escaped, the highest relieved from the captivity, captivity of Babylon. So what they're doing right now is about to reestablish the church or the, the, or, the or, or the temple. But these are all men. The, the priests, the Levites, and their brethren, these are men. These are not women. Mm -hmm. They consecrate getting the garments and stuff ready so they can start back to service of the Most High. They've been in captivity. Now they're free from captivity about to reestablish the order of the Most High. Okay? Next precept. Next precept, Exodus chapter 28, verses 1 through 4. I started out uh, in the so-called introduction. I said, never have the Most High made a woman a priest. Most people don't even understand the operation of the priest. Okay? There were priests who did the service of God. There were priests who did the sacrifice. And there were priests and there were prophets that taught the law. That taught the law. Read. Exodus 28, verse 1. And take thou unto thee Aaron thy brother and his sons with him from among the children of Israel, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office, even Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar, Aaron's sons. And thou shalt make holy garments for Aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, <coughs> that they may make Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, an ephod, and a robe, and a broidered coat, <coughs> a mitri, and a girdle. Mitri is what y'all see mostly out here in heaven. But let's go. <coughs> and they shall, make in ho they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. So have y'all ever read that the sisters have had uh, holy dresses for, for the ministry of God? These garments went to the men, Aaron's sons. These special garments went to the sons of Aaron, the Levites. Okay? But these are the men that the Most High put up before his children to lead them and to explain and teach the law to his children. Next precept. First Chronicle chapter six, starting at verse one. First Chronicle. Mm -hmm. Now, when we go through this genealogy, let me know if y'all y'all see you know if, if it's a one that's <coughs> included in this whole uh, list of, of men. And it reads. The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari, and the sons of Kohath, Amram, Izar, Hebron, and Uzziah, and the children of Amram, Aaron, and Moses, and Miriam. The sons also of Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. Eleazar begot Phineas. What is this? Miriam, that's a sister, but mm -hmm. some of her sons, mm -hmm. oh. not her. Uh, okay. I hope y'all caught that. Yeah, also, yeah, in the beginning of that verse, it says children. Prior to that, it says sons, sons. Mm -hmm. And when it gets to them, it says children. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Eleazar begot Phineas. Phineas begot Abishua. 
and the Baisu will be got Buki, and Buki be, be got Uzi, and Uzi be got Zerahai, Zerahiah, and Zerahiah be got Moriah, and Moriah be got Amar Amaria, and Am Amariah be got Ahaita, and Ahaita be got Zadok, and Zadok be got Ahai Maaz, and Ahai Maaz be got Azariah, and Azariah be got Johanna, and Johanna be got Azariah. He is, he it is that executed the priest all in the temple that Solomon built in Jerusalem. And Azariah begot Amariah, and Amariah begot Ahitub, and Ahitub begot Zadok, and Zadok begot Shalom, and Shalom begot Hilkiah, and Hilkiah begot Azariah, and Azariah begot Sariah, and Sariah begot Jehoshadah, and Jehoshadah went into captivity when the Most High carried away Judah and Jerusalem by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. The Babylonians, this one, this one, this one, this one, the priests went into captivity. Three. The sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Morara. And these be the names of the sons of Gershon, Libni, Shimei, and the sons of Kohath were Amram and Izar. Gershon was Moses' son. And Hebron and Uzziah, the sons of Morari, Mali and Mushi, and these are the families of the Levites according to their fathers. Of Gershom, Libni, his son, Jaha, his son, Zamah, his son, <coughs> Joah, his son, Idu, his son, Zerah, his, his son, Jeadarai, his son, the sons of Kohath, Aminadab, his son, Korah, his son, I see it. his son. Wait, are oh. y'all getting the point? Yeah, son, yes. son, son, his son, son, his son. son. His son. son. His son. <laughs> so when it says that it, it, uh, in, in Romans chapter nine verse four, the servants of God, it went to the men. Huh? Now these are all priests. All priests. Levites. Read. Let's get it. <coughs> El Elkanah, his son. And he buys <coughs> out his son and Assyr his son. Let's stop there and, and, and go to 48. 48. The brethren, also the Levites, were appointed unto <coughs> all manners of service of the tabernacle of the house of God. The brethren, the Levites, right? Yeah. The priest was, was ordered in all manners of the service of God. Not the sisters. And they got many sisters. Who ate of the sacrifices, but they were not teachers. Okay. Read. 49. But Aaron and his sons offered upon the altar of burnt offering and on the altar of incense and were appointed for all the work of the place most holy and to make an atonement for Israel according to <coughs> all that Moses, the servant of God, had commanded. Stop there. Let's go to um, Ezra chapter 7, <coughs> verse 10 and 11. <coughs> Please try it. Ezra was who? What tribe was Ezra from? He was a Levite. He was a priest and a scribe. So all of the uh, priests were Levites. Yes. Yep. Levites. Yes. 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 The book of Ezra, chapter 7, verse 10. Okay. For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Most High, and to do it, and to teach in Israel statutes and judgments. To do what? To teach in Israel statutes and judgments. One of the functions of the priest was to teach Israel statutes and judgments. Law, orders, and commandments. Excuse me. Good. Now, this is the copy of the letter the king Atoxerus gave unto Ezra the priest, the scribe, even a scribe of the words of the commandments of the Most High and of his statutes to Israel. Y'all don't remember, I think Ezra the wrote, I, I think I burnt out, burnt out records, Ezra and like, I think five, five of the brethren, four or five of the brethren, but they wrote like, what, 200 some books. And um, well, a couple of days, I forgot, I forgot. Thank <laughs> you. 
blowing a horn back there. Mm -hmm. Wait, we just the next precept, Ezra chapter 8, verse 17 through 20. And it reads, And I sent them with commandment unto Edu, the chief at the place of Casifir, and I told them what they should say unto Idu and to his brethren, the Nethinims, at the place of Casifir, that they should bring unto us ministers for the house of our God. <coughs> and by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding. A, of understanding? a man of understanding. A woman. A man of man. understanding. Read. Of the sons of Ma Mali, the son of Levi, the son of Israel, and Sherebiah, with his sons and his brethren, 18, and Hashabiah, and him, with him, Jeshiah, of the son of Mor Morari, his brethren, and their 20 sons, 20, also of the Nethanims, whom David and the princes had appointed for the service of the Levites. 220 Nethanims, all of them were expressed by name. So I'm showing you, as most of the reestablishing in order, these are men. Okay, next precept. The book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verses 1 through 8. And it reads, and all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street. That so, so like it, those who don't know, Ezra and Nehemiah were both in captain Babylon and came up together. Mm -hmm. So this is why so it's, it's one, it's corresponding in, in, in harmony. Okay. Let's go. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the streets that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe. You know what? I, and for those who are watching this who say we've been in church for a long time, three hours is not, is not long. Listen to how long these brothers and sisters and children stood outside listening to the false house law. You should be ashamed of yourself if you say you can't sit down for three hours for a while because this is God's work. Listen to what we're about to read. Okay? See <laughs> <laughs> and they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Most High had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the book of the law before the congregation, both of both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein, and he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. Ezra stood and read from the morning until the midday. Mm. Probably more than three hours to me. Still. These men and women, they, now I, don't, I don't think they had uh, lounge chairs right there. <laughs> so, <coughs> okay, now let's get it. And, hey, it ain't over yet though, but let's mm. go. It's, it's not just Ezra doing this. It's mm. a large body of people. But let's check it out how long they'll out there listening to the Most High's word okay. and doing his work. Let's get it. Before the men and women, and those that could understand, and the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah, and Shema, and Aniah, and Urijah, and Hilkiah, and Maasiah, on his right hand, and on his left hand, Pediah, and Mashael, Ma and Malchiah, and Hashem, and Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. And y'all get that? On his right hand and left hand of the priest. Men. Yeah. <coughs> Men. Mm -hmm. The women were in the audience as Paul and Peter was teaching. Right? That's a large variety of people. So if you got a question, they say, go to the actual husband at home. 
And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. Oh, oh no, see, they stood up. I better not hear nothing else out your mouth about your mother. These people stood up all this time. Men, women, and children. Right? And Ezra blessed the Most High, the great God, and all the people answered, Amon, Amon, with lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshiped the Most High with their faces to the ground. Also, Joshua and Bani and Sherebiah, Jamin, Aku, Shebathai, Hodijah, Maasiah, Kelita, Azariah, Josephah, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to <coughs> understand the law. They caused the people to understand the law. The only way you can cause people to understand the law is to explain it. Right now, precept on precept, precept on precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little. Isaiah 28, verse 9, what, 19. Let's get it. And the people stood in their place. So they read in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And gave the sense, explained it. Now, next precept. Let's go to Romans chapter 9, verse 4. I quoted this scripture, but I'm going to read it. Okay. I'm going to start at verse 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertains the adoption, the crucifixion, the potential of being adopted, reconciled to the Father through the blood of Christ? Okay? That's what the adoption is. He adopted us if we are obedient back to him as sons or daughters. And the glory, which is the kingdom, and the covenants, he made two covenants with the children of Israel. Right? No other people. And the giving of the law. He only gave his law, judgment, statutes, commandments, orders to Israelites. No other people. And the service of God. We just read about the brothers doing the service of God. So we saw two things. There's many more. Okay? We saw the chief priests doing the sacrifices. And we saw other priests teaching, making sense, explaining God's law. Other priests had to clean up, you know, they poured us all kinds of stuff. They did everything that <coughs> concerned the, priest, the, the, the service of God. But it went to the Israelites. And these were all men. And the promises, the promises of the Bible, of, of the men, of the kingdom, of Christ's kingdom, goes to Israelites, go to the people. These promises go to the men that are obedient to Christ and the women that are obedient to Christ. Okay? Back to the program. Program. Oh, yeah. Luke, chapter 6. Luke, chapter 6. Mm-hmm. Luke chapter 6, verse 13. Now, this is what I was mentioning earlier. If at any time the Most High wanted to show that he wanted women to be teachers, head of churches, this would be a time to do it. Christ raised and trained men to be leaders. To establish this church, to go out, preach his gospel. Read. Luke chapter 6, verse 13. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. He chose twelve men, right? Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother, James and John, Philip and Bartholomew, Matthew and Thomas, 
James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simeon, called Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James, and Judas Iscariot, which also was the traitor. Now, out of those 12, did you hear any female mention? No, I no. See how it's in harmony with what was established in the Old Testament? Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's no women that the most I sent to Christ to be leaders. Mm -hmm. For God, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Let's preach, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verses 16 through, six, through uh, 18. Turn back to preach, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. And it reads, Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before Ahiah thy God in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Most High empty. Every man shall get as he is able, according to the blessing of the Most High thy God, which he hath given thee. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates. Judges and officers shall make these men in the gates. See? The, this is during the holy, the three, the, what I call the big three, the holy days. These men are to come and be judges and officers. They are to be guardians also and establish order of the people. It be, it's made the people come in here. These men <coughs> were in positions of leadership. Not just through the priesthood, but in all things. Right? And I say that for a reason. I, I mentioned earlier. No, go ahead. Let's keep reading. I say it again. Which a higher thy God giveth thee throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment. <coughs> just 18, that's it. Yep. 18 verse 1. The priest, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel. They shall eat the offering of the Most High made by fire and his inheritance. Verse 5. For I thy God hath chosen him out of all thy tribes to stand to minister in the name of the Most High, him and his sons forever. Him and his who? Sons. Him and his sons, not his daughters. <laughs> Verse 6. Mm -hmm. And if a Levite come from any of thy gates out of Israel, where he sojourned, and come with all the desire of his mind unto the place which Ahiah shall choose, then he shall minister in the name of Ahiah his God, as all his brethren the Levites do, which stand there before the Most High. Okay. You know, I just pray that, you know, those who have <coughs> learned from this lesson. But never in the Bible has the Most High established women to be priests, to be teachers, leader of, 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 of his flock. Okay? You might go and say, well, he used Deborah. Deborah was a judge. The Most High did a, a unique thing once. But there's, all, there's way more examples. Even Deborah was, was not a priest. She didn't teach the law to the people. Okay? So ultimately, you see that the, the, the servant of God it goes to men, and this is this this goes back. Let's say this too. It's written that we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but with you know spirits in high places and darkness. So we are in a spiritual war. So this as we this as in the times the four times where in the past where we fought wars. The women did not go out to fight the wars. The men did. Right? So this time the men fought in the physical wars. He established the leaders to fight men to fight in the spiritual war. Okay? Women are not to be out here before men usurping the divine authority over a man. For as the Bible says, suffer not a woman to teach. So if you come up with a philosophy that because you have a degree, because a white man gave you a degree, that you have the authority now to teach over God's people, you are gravely amiss. 
Uh, you are in great error. Okay? Brothers, no longer from the day, if you heard this lesson, let a woman pray for you. It's not becoming a saint. A woman is not supposed to teach or pray over a man. Again, I'm going to say, can a woman pray for a man? Yes, she can. Silently. Can a man pray for a woman openly? Yes, that's our duty. But we were created first. He gave us authority, <coughs> dominion over the woman that we give that. So, we're going to continue. And that's what even Christ even said in the book of Revelation, reprimanding the churches. One of the churches, you know, he, he committed the brothers. He said that that he that uh, what did he say? Basically, he was proud of them because they suffered not the, you know, that woman that's the extreme Jezebel. They didn't allow women to teach us up in the church. They fought the spirit of women trying to take over the, the, uh, the uh, church. And a lot of women have taken over these churches outside of being the pastor. Mm -hmm. Been ruling from the cheers. Mm -hmm. You see? So, hey, when the last day is people, Either, either you're getting with the most high, but stay with Satan. Okay? Only you can get with the most high is keep his laws and commandments and do the things that he says. Remain obedient. Be obedient. Only to what he says. Outside of that, there be judgment. And that's the system we can put. Again, I'm elder, brother my eye, for waiting to have the church. Brother Brooke, thank you for your ear and for your patience. Shalom. 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 Pick a side. Which side are you?